Well, welcome everybody. Today is Thursday. It is an exciting day. Today, we're gonna to do a Wayfinder walkthrough. I'm Dave Brock, I'm the community manager. Normally with me during these events, these walkthroughs is Andy Corbis. However, he decided to explore the great upper peninsula of Michigan with his family. Why? I don't know, but we're, he, we're, we're talking to him about that. Anyhow, um, again, I wanna welcome you. And uh, today's focus is the Wayfinder and then moving from the Wayfinder into your way. The goal is to get you set up so that way you can submit that first assignment because we all want to succeed, right? We all want to, um, we all want to do better. And, and the purpose of these events is really about preparing us today for what's gonna be coming tomorrow. So let me, let me separate what Wayfinder is from your way real quick. Um, I think that for a while they, they've been kind of synonymous, but they are in fact vastly different. So Wayfinder is your online campus. You're gonna go there and you're gonna ask questions about um, to your faculty, you're gonna go into your course group, which we'll cover that in here in just a moment, but you're gonna ask questions about the assignment. You're going to um, ask questions about any issues you may have in your course, or if you have a question about your finance, um, you have a question about your course schedule, anything like that takes place right in the Wayfinder community. That is your digital campus. And we have people there waiting to answer questions. And there's different types of questions you can, that can get asked. Now, your way is a program. Your way is the program that focuses on general education courses offered through Olivet. They are at no cost to you. The content is delivered free 100%. And the purpose of that is to help you get started to get back into school. Um, some time has gone by and it can be quite intimidating to jump back into it. And so the Your Way program is self-paced. Um, there, there are no deadlines, there is no schedule. It is based off of your schedule and your needs. And there's a list of courses you'll see and, and we'll cover some of these things, but these two worlds are vastly different. Wayfinder is the tool that we use to get to uh, the Your Way program, but it's used for many, many other things, and that is your digital campus. So without further uh, ado, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So let me, let me go on and talk about um, the community. So when you first log into the community, and, and if you forget about where you need to go, it's community.olivet.edu, and you see that there. This is gonna get you directly into the homepage on the Wayfinder community. And the way that you know you're there is that you're gonna see this picture across the top. Um, across the top of that, you see some options there. You're gonna see home, you're gonna see engaged groups, new courses and more. And so when you kind of expand out on that page, when you look at your page, this is, this is what you're going to see. And this is how you know you've reached the community homepage. So each uh, element across the top, engaging groups, each uh, course has a course group associated with it. So when you turn in assignments, it posts inside this course group. When you submit a test, tests are different. Those don't go here. Those stay directly in your syllabus. And these are all things we'll cover here uh, very shortly. But the course group really is your classroom. It is where you get to go and ask questions to your faculty member. You get to um, you get to ask questions about, hey, I didn't understand this one assignment. Um, can you give some clarity to this? Or I read this article and it touched on this one subject that we that I just got done reading in, in the class. And it gets to it allows you to expand the, the dialogue between you and the faculty and you and some of the other students who were in that course with you at that moment. And so you also see view courses. And view courses is an important page uh, because this is where you get to see all the courses that you are required to take. Explore uh, topics. These are other topics that you can look into. Along the, the middle of the page there, you see these boxes with these pictures, colorful. These are places you can go to ask questions. If you have a question about anything about Wayfinder or Trailhead related, ask them right here. There's business, our, our business program, education program. Um, below that, you'll see nursing, and then you'll see student, student services. Student services is exactly that. You're the student and you have a question, that's where you go to ask those questions. Um, about Wayfinder and Trailhead is in case you have a question about anything, um, if something is not working uh, or, or you've submitted something, you're not seeing it, you can go ahead and bring that into that box right there, that space, and that'll get taken care of. And this right here is your profile. This is important for you to get. 
Okay, so again, we want to know a little bit about you. We want to know who you are, where you come from. Do, are you a coffee drinker? Do you like long walks on a beach? Um, and then you're going to see a little silhouette um, on the top right hand corner. And this is where you can upload your profile picture. Um, down below that is your own feed. So you get to see any dialogue you've had in any class, anything you've submitted will show up here. So you can take a look at that. Um, and so this, this is an important part because again, we're a community. This allows us to see one another, to get to know one another with a little more detail. Let's take a look at across the top where, you says, where it says view courses. So view courses has um, a list of all the courses here that are offered, but there's only so many courses that you have to take. And so the way that you know this is that you'll see a box that says go to course. When you see that yellow box that says go to course, you click that and it takes you to the course. It takes you to that syllabus. If you see an option there, it says course not required. Um, that means that you've taken it already from another institution and that transferred in, or it's just not required. It's, if it says verifying equivalency, that means um, they're reviewing transcripts. So that is one that is in the process of verification to determine if it's going to transfer in or not. And then you see course completed. If you've completed a course or it is transferred in, then you're going to see that right there. That means that you don't have to do that anymore. You can still review the course if you would like to, um, but the goal is for you to focus on the courses um, that you need to in order to complete your gen eds. So when you click go to course, it's going to take you to the syllabus. And all, all the syllabi are pretty much laid out the same. You've got uh, the course description across the top. You've got syllabus, you have the course objectives, textbooks. Let's talk about textbooks for a second. The great thing about the Your Way program is that all textbooks have no cost to them. So we've sourced textbooks from our own Venner library on campus. We've used articles, anything that we could access that was um, at no cost to the student is what we've plugged in there. So that is a huge benefit to you. There's supplemental materials. Supplemental materials, in case you have a paper, we do follow standards for APA writing. So there's a link there to the Benner Library where you can download the APA template. Um, and if you have questions about that, let us know um, and we will get you in the right direction so you can learn more about what APA is and how that works in writing a paper. You're going to see policies, policies that are relevant, relevant to the uh, School of Graduates and Continuing Studies, that is who we are. And, um, and so the, it gives you a list of policies and then the grading scale. It tells you, it shows you the catalog uh, for the School of Graduate and Continuing Studies and how grades are put together. On the right hand side, you see these four boxes. Course group is where you can click to click join group. And you will actually join that course group. Remember, we talked about the digital classroom, right? This is the digital classroom to that space. When you click join group, it makes you a member of that. And it takes you to that course group. See, this is where you see all the interaction and dialogue. Benner Library. Olivet is a physical campus in Bourbon, Illinois. And we have a physical library. We also have a lot of free resources available through the library. So when you click visit the library, it's going to take you to their website and give you instructions on how to access resources. We also provide a complimentary download for Microsoft Office for all PCs and Macs. And this is important because some courses you'll be writing a paper, um, some courses you might have to do a PowerPoint. And we wanted to provide you with those tools that are going to be necessary for you to be successful. Um, and so you download that and it it walks you through the process of how to get that onto your computer. And uh, it is encouraged that you use that because Microsoft Word is an awesome tool. And, uh, and so talking about awesome tools, the very last box there is called Grammarly. Now, as it says, as an Olivet student, you get a complimentary free premium version of Grammarly. Grammarly is the most amazing thing. Once you go in there, you log, you, once you click on that, all you have to do is set up your account using your Olivet credentials. The way you log into the community is exactly how you log into Grammarly. And what you're going to do with this is this is going to help you write your papers. There's actually a page there where you can use that just to write your papers. And as you're writing it, it shows on the right hand side this dialog box of all the grammar issues you're experiencing from uh, words that are misspelled, period usage, comma usage, quotation marks, 
because some of these papers have to be top notch, right? And so this is an incredible tool to help you be successful in writing those papers and ensuring all your grammar is taken care of. I, it is highly encouraged that you, if you don't have access to this, that you get access to it today because it is a powerful and amazing tool. So let's continue on. So the lower part of the syllabus, once you go in there, um, you're gonna see below the, the grading scales so we're picking up there is the grading and assessment process. So 40% um, unit tests are 40% of your grade. Let's talk about tests first. So in order to pass a test, you have to pass it at 70% or higher. That is a pass rate, okay? And 40% of your entire grade is gonna be found in those tests. Now, the, the best part about these tests is that you can take them as many times as you need to in order to pass. Some people are not satisfied with 90%. Some people must get 100%. You can do that too. And the last test that you take is the one that will show up as on your grade in your syllabus. And, and so that is awesome. There are assignments you're gonna find all throughout each course. There's gonna be um, writing papers. There's gonna be discussions. There's gonna be responding to other people. There's gonna be some peer reviews. And so the assessment, uh, the assignments are gonna be marked as either complete or incomplete by the faculty. So it gets submitted, the faculty will take it, review it. Did you meet the criteria or not? They're gonna mark it either complete or incomplete. If it's incomplete, don't fret. You can, you can resubmit that as many times you as necessary. You don't go back and fix the one you did, you resubmit a new one, and you can um, obviously take from the one you already submitted and just tweak that based off of the faculty's feedback and resubmit that. And uh, again, this is part of that 40% grade. Um, no, I'm sorry, uh, just the test for the 40%. The mastery assessment, this is the big one. So the mastery assessment, which comprises 60% of your final grade, this is kind of like the, the prove it. This is the final project you're gonna have for that course. And with this, um, you have to demonstrate the fact that you know the coursework. And, um, and so this is a project, this can be a test that comes in a couple different forms but this will be going before the faculty member who will go in and grade it. And um, they will provide a letter grade for this. And that letter grade gets, gets wrapped up into that 60%. So between your tests and your mastery assessment, that makes up your overall grade. Now we also give you, before the course starts, we give you a peek um, at the mastery assessment. You can't submit the mastery assessment until all work has been marked as complete. That includes tests and assignments. You can submit it, um, but, it, but our faculty don't have access to it until that transcript fee. It's $50 per credit hour. So all the content is 100% free, but um, because we have people working in the background, we have a, a $50 per credit hour transcript fee. So let's go ahead and take a look at this dynamic piece of the syllabus. So we're gonna revisit this there in just a minute. So just be aware that um, we're going to take a look at this. So this gives you a breakdown. So our, our courses are broken up into modules. Each module represents approximately one week worth of work in any normal course. And you get to see all the assignments that are associated with that course right here at the beginning. So the first thing you want to do, start at the beginning. You don't want to start submitting assignments where you haven't learned the content. In order to get to the content, you click view module, that purple box right there. And this is gonna take you into Trailhead where all the content is laid out. And you're gonna see that uh, module one is titled Physical Geography, middle module one, Introduction to Geography. And then it breaks it down into units. And the units is where the content is delivered. This is also where you're gonna find those assignments located in that. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Pretty much all units are laid out the same. You're gonna start out with the title. You're gonna see the course objectives that are associated with that unit. Um, and then the course is going to be laid out. Um, you're going to see an introduction. You're, you're going to have videos. You're going to have to do read some articles. Um, there's going to be PowerPoints. There's, it's just delivered in so many different ways. But it's going to pretty much cons uh, consist of the same process and the same flow for each unit. Um, on the right-hand side, you see uh, a time estimate about how long it should take approximately to get through. Um, to get through that course. And then as you scroll down, you're going to see uh, this move because there's different sections. So towards the end, you're gonna see a couple things here. The assignments you saw in the syllabus, 
now here shows up at the end, but it's the, the assignments that are associated with this content. So the content and these assignments work together. All right, and at the bottom, you're gonna see this little quiz. This is something that um, is in each unit and this helps you um, kind of finalize that unit and get you access to the next unit. So this is gonna consist of anywhere from two to five questions and there's a point value associated with it. This does not affect your grade in any way. Let me clarify that. This does not affect anything going on at the end of the course when your grade is put together. Um, this is more like challenge points. So in order to get 100 points, uh, you have to answer each question right the first time. If you don't get it, then you do it again, but that point value gets cut in half. And so again, this doesn't um, affect your grade. This is kind of more like a personal challenge. Like, can I get this 100, 100 points? Um, and like I said, then it gives you access to the next, um, the next unit. But again, I wanna reiterate that these assignments that you see here are exactly the ones you see in the syllabus and they associate directly to the content that was just delivered. So let's go back to the syllabus for a second. So let me go back a slide. Let's take a look. You see digital maps, discussion response one, discussion response two, learning activity and test. If we look here, we see discussion, discussion response one, two, uh, learning activity and test. Do the exact same thing. So when you complete that, it's gonna show up in here as either completed, or um, submitted and, and awaiting a grade or complete or incomplete. So it's gonna be important that you pay attention to this because everything on this syllabus for all modules has to be marked as complete in order for you to access that mastery assessment, which again is uh, comprises 60% of your grade. And that's what goes to the faculty member uh, for grading. Let's talk about a learning activity. What are the different assignments? A learning activity is um, something where you get into the course and you're reading and, and so you kind of have to do a project or you're talking about it more in depth. So you're learning about it and this is you um, taking your thoughts and, and your ideas and constructing um, an assignment that is based off of the content. And so it's they're all pretty much laid out the same. You see instructions, you see a prompt and below that you see a, a rubric and the rubric tells you how the faculty will be reviewing um, this course and, and this assignment. Um, and again, at the bottom, you'll see a box that says, just put in a brief summary of your work, a couple sentences. And there's a reason why this is important, um, but I'll cover that here in a second. And at the bottom, you see a file upload. So if you have a Word document that you have to upload, if depending on what the assignment requires, um, you're gonna have to upload a file here. So if you do in Word, upload it here. If you um, do it in Grammarly, you wanna download that from Grammarly, and you're gonna upload that here. If it's a PowerPoint presentation, no matter what it is, you'll upload it here and then add in a brief summary of what it is. So a peer review. So in, in most cases, you're gonna see a peer review that's going to follow up a learning activity. So a peer review is where you're going to review the work of someone else. How do they do in meeting the criteria that was set forth in the rubric? You're gonna see instructions, you're gonna see a prompt, now at the bottom, you're gonna see some options provided. The, this is work that has been submitted by other students. So you're going to select one for review and you're gonna review it. And you're gonna see inside of that, there's gonna be a rubric. Um, there's going to be uh, information that you have to just, you're basically working like, <clears throat> almost like a faculty in a sense, but you're, all you're doing is, is assessing their work and maybe um, pointing out things that they can maybe focus on or encourage them. Um, it really is a great tool. So uh, something else, another type of assignment is a discussion. A discussion is where you, you are asked questions, uh, you're given instructions and a prompt here, and um, you basically get to talk about what it is that you just learned based off of the questions that are found in the prompt. And this is, this is great because this is about dialogue, right? So you get to share your thoughts and ideas. And, uh, and this is really um, liberating because we might be reading something and we might agree or disagree. And so when you come across these questions in the prompt, um, you know, you're just gonna have to kind of explore through that a little bit. Um, and so then, then you're gonna have a discussion response. So every discussion has, a dis has two discussion responses. And again, you have instructions, you have a prompt, you're gonna select one that you're going to review. You're going to review that, you're gonna provide some feedback. Do you agree, do you disagree? 
um, hey, I, I thought this was really great. Um, there are expectations, though, for um, discussion responses. And again, these are each one of these are things that the faculty will go into mark as either complete or incomplete based off of the rubric. And, uh, and so this is, again, this is that dialogue based thing that I'm talking about. This is where we get to have some exchange with other students. And then we have our test. Our test, again, simple instructions there. Um, they're A through D, uh, multiple choice. You go through and you select your answer. Now, what's amazing about these tests is that as soon as you submit it, you get immediate feedback. It will, as soon as you hit submit, it takes you back to the top of the page. It shows you your score. And then as you scroll back down through those questions, you get direct feedback. So these questions have wrong answer feedback. And it tells you this is where you go to find the answer to this question. And you get to take the, the test as many times as you need to. Um, and so this is a wonderful, wonderful tool. And uh, a lot of students take advantage of that multiple use, uh, multiple submissions. And, uh, and they might start out as a 60 to 70%, but um, a lot of them end up being 100% because they get to go back into the content, review it, uh, read up on something and come back and retake the test. Um, so this is what a syllabus looks like. Once things have gone in, once your test, you see, right, you see a, a test, module three, unit one, that whoever took this test got 100% and um, is marked as complete. Here's a discussion. Um, the, there's two types of faculty comments. There's public, which will show up here, but then there's private. That's information that only you see. And that's where that constructive feedback comes back from the, from the faculty. So that way they can, um, they, they're going to give you, you know, how to improve this. So that way you can hit that to that complete, um, to mark, have it marked as complete. And so again, your module each unit and each assignment has to be marked as complete in order for you to access that mastery assessment. So again, we talked about the online campus, the online classroom, and this is exactly where it is. This is COM 105 Oral Communications um, classroom. This is where the faculty exists. This is where other students are submitting their work. You can go in here and you can ask questions of the faculty, other students. Um, this is where our dialogue happens. On the right hand side, uh, well, let me talk about the top here. Um, you're going to see a different type of view, but you're going to see how you can set your um, notifications because if a faculty responds to you, you want to be notified, right? So make sure you go in there and you set your notifications. Um, you're going to want to follow this group. You're going to become a member of this group. Um, so make sure you click that. But uh, set your notifications in here so you're notified of when things get um, graded or other people submit and, and to kind of help with that dialogue. On the right hand side, we see the group details. Uh, these group details just kind of give a quick overview of what's to be expected with this course and with this information here. You can go straight to the course in uh, Trailhead. Um, you can go straight to the syllabus. You can meet your professor and, and see how their profile and who they are a little more behind the scenes. And, um, and so again, this is your classroom. This is where you're gonna go for that course to ask any question you need to ask that is not um, specific to that, uh, or it is specific to the assignment. It could be based on anything in that classroom. Um, everything that you submit, every assignment you submit gets posted here. And so you can go back in and you can review that. You can look it back over, make sure you got everything right. And then our last slide, again, we want to just take a look right back here. This is your classroom. This is the Wayfinders classroom. From this, you look across the top, you have view courses. That's how you get to the Your Way classroom or to the Your Way courses. And you get to see the, the uh, classroom for each course. Um, but this is where you want to go to ask questions. If you have a question that isn't specific to the course, this is where you want to do it. The search bar across the top is powerful. You want to make sure you're using that search bar. Um, we have knowledge articles that exist that answer questions in advance, or maybe other people have asked the same exact question that you have. You type that in there and it's going to populate those previous conversations where your question might get answered immediately. And let's say that you, you're in there and you can't figure it out. Um, and you post your question inside the About Wayfinder or Trailhead, or you post your question to student services. Um, someone's gonna be there to, to enter, engage with that question but let's say you're not really sure where the question needs to go. 
go ahead and ask us. Use that yellow box. It'll give you some options of where you want that to go to. Um, go ahead and ask us. Ask us anything. Um, we are not afraid of questions. It can be specific to transcripts. It can be, um, hey, this one school I, I did some work in isn't showing up. What's going on there? Um, and then along the bottom, you're going to see an option where uh, you can um, ask a, a question that, let's see, you're just not really sure where in the world that question needs to go. At the bottom of the page, you're going to see where that question can land. And so, um, again, we just want to encourage you to uh, get familiar with the community, get familiar with the layout. Um, if you have questions about how to get into your courses, if you have questions about how to submit things, use the search bar. Um, that is a great way to find tools and resources that are right at your fingertips. Our goal really is for you to be successful. Whatever your goal is when you came into this program, we want to support you in that. We want to make sure our obligation is to you to make sure that that is happening. And so that your goals are being met and that we come alongside you and support you in that. And so if you ever have a question, if you have any issues, please bring it to our attention because um, we want to make sure that you're getting the help that you need as quickly as possible. Well, if you have any questions following up from this, um, make sure you ask those. Uh, if you're watching a recording of this later, you can ask those in the About Wayfinder and Trailhead and, and, and some will respond to you as quickly as possible. Every Thursday at 11.30 a.m., we have a live event. We're going to have one next week. And next week, we're going to talk about what the multidisciplinary studies program is. What is that? What does it mean? Well, we're going to talk to the dean of the graduate school, Jeremy Van Clay, who is going to walk us through that because he's also the program director for that program. And he's going to help us understand what that is and what it looks like. Hey, everybody, thanks for the time. I appreciate um, everything that you're doing um, from my seat. I'm excited for you. I'm encouraged. I'm inspired by the work that you're putting out there. And so again, if you have any questions, please let us know. We want to help you be successful as much as possible. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day.